Morning guys, uh, you're watching Outer Line Adventures. This weekend the weather is really turning it on, like really turning it on. The whole way along the east coast of Queensland just looks magic. There's uh, no wind, no chance of rain. A lot of boys are heading to 1770 to fish the reef. A lot of boys are heading to Fraser. Local uh, grounds off Stratty and that here are looking really good. We're gonna do something a little bit different. I've been there before and you've, if you haven't seen all our videos, go back and have a look at our previous Double Island Point one. Um, but we're heading to Double Island. So me and a couple of mates are going up there anyway. This will be this boat's first trip. Um, a little bit nervous. It's a very heavy boat for a 5.8 metre boat. It's a 6 mil hull and 5 mil sides. It's got a 200 yammy on the back. So it weighs a fair bit. Um, the rangy is already carrying 600 kilos on the back constantly. Plus this, so towing it along the beach, all three of us are piling into that. You'll see the size of the fellas that's come with me. They weigh about 6,000 kilograms. And um, <laughs> yeah, we're, so we haven't got a backup vehicle anyway. We're gonna go up tonight. We're gonna um, camp at a caravan park because high tide's at 8.30. We won't get there till about then. So we'll sleep in the caravan park, get up really early tomorrow morning, which is Saturday and head up and we'll go out fishing straight away. But Thought I'd do a bit of routine maintenance for the first time since I've had the boat, do the bearings and stuff and have a go with this. This is called Murphy's Law. Snapping wheel studs. The first ones I got off. Leaf springs are not looking good. Everything else doesn't look too bad. Like, actually the rest of the trailer looks fine. It's just the springs, the bearings, and the wheel studs. So. I got quite angry before when they snapped, but I've calmed down now anyway. Uh, when you snap a wheel stud, and I didn't even know this, so that's pretty silly of me. I'll, I know now, I've known for a couple of years, but we're on our way up to 1770. We snapped a couple, sheared a couple of wheel studs off. I didn't know, but you can. Yeah, these aren't in good health, but you can tap them in, right? And then just go get new wheel studs, new nuts, put them in, away you go. So have a look at the salt build up there, like that's, there's no way I'm going up there like that. So anyway, I'm going to tap these out. Spray them with a bit of good old stuff. I'm going to tap all these out. I've got a bit of a job ahead of me today, that's for sure. We're leaving at about 6 o'clock tonight. And um, I've ran through Jarmas already. But anyway, that's what a trip away fishing is. There you go. So you can just tap them out, go and get yourself a new wheel stud, some new wheel nuts, whack them back in and you're right to go, do your bearings. All right, they're out. So that's it, go get new ones, whack them in. I'm gonna test the other ones first and just see how many I have to replace. So I'll get bearings, I'll pull the bearings out now so I can get the numbers off them, get spare ones. And um, hopefully these springs last this trip and I'll replace them when I get back as well. So I need a whole new trailer. I want to, I want to, I'd love a big aluminium trailer for this thing. A big four wheel drive off road one because I'm going to take this boat to some stupid places. And this trailer hasn't got much clearance from the tires to the uh, U bolts there. So while you're cruising along the beach, that's one thing that'll get you bogged pretty easily is that scraping along the sand, taking the wheel off the weight off the wheels and your car's dragging the whole thing instead of the wheels just floating over. So this is gonna be an interesting trip. I have no idea how it's gonna go. Well, so what I'll do is uh, I'll do a quick run through on how to do your bearings and all that sort of stuff. I know a lot of guys know how to do it and that's fine, but a lot of guys don't know how to do it and ladies don't know how to do it. Even young kids that are watching this, you can learn how to do wheel bearings. So because... I've just pulled the split pin out of here. There's a little hole in here. I've pulled the split pin out, all right? Just put that away. I drop everything in a little bucket of petrol. Okay, now this nut. All right. I wear gloves. Because your hands get bloody filthy. All right, now, this will just rattle off. That's your outer bearing, all right? That's your washer, you don't want to lose any of these parts. Now, you see that, all right? That brown grease, that's no good. That's salt water. 
that green, it's no good. That's salt water. There's no way of stopping it getting in. It's just what it does. So every, I don't know, depends on how many trips you're doing, but I usually do them twice a year, at least. All right, now, I drop them all in that petrol. I pull the hub off, all right? In the back of the hub, you've got a little, uh, another big metal washer there, or a sealer, which slips on too. So that's, that's your back ring. That's your dust seal, or your salt water seal, all right? So I get a really little screwdriver, flat edge screwdriver like this, and you wanna get it in between that seal and the hub, all righty? Then what you do is you work your way around and pry out that back seal. So I'll do that now, move that over. Get it between there. Your taps. All right, worked my way around. That's it. That comes out of the back of your hub. And that's what locks your rear bearing in, your big bearing. So, into the petrol. Rear bearing, into the petrol. Now you're just left with a hub with nothing in it. All right, now I scrape all the dirty grease out of here. Have a look at it. That was no good at all. So I steal a roll of Sarah's paper towels. <laughs> I just get all the grease off like that. Wipe it all out. All right, we're left with a super clean hub there. Always want to make sure there's no big pitting marks in this area here because that's where your bearing seats onto, all right? Now after your bearings, being in the petrol for a while, it's softened all that grease, and it'll just fall off like that. Oop, like that, see? So, oh, I can already feel that this bearing is not good. Look at that, the way it turns. That's not good at all. So, what I'll do, is I'll take this up and I'll match the numbers on the back of it here which is I can hardly even see them but I can see them on this one numbers on the back one. so I'll take them I'll get probably four sets of new bearings to be honest and I'll just put new bearings throughout this whole thing I'll get new wheel studs I'll get new kits for all of it and just no mucking around because if you're heading to a place like 1770 or if you're in WA and you're remote Kimberley going all up along there and your bearings go and you haven't got any spares or you haven't got any spare wheel studs, you're in a lot of trouble, especially in remote places, that's for sure. The Kimberley, Jesus, you boys would do it tough out in the bush when you uh, do a wheel bearing. But anyway, we've got 24 hour services over here, but it costs you through the nose and um, you're better off just having all the spare parts, knowing how to do this, get yourself out of the shit. And uh, yeah, so anyway, clean all the grease off your spindle, off your axle spindle. And if it's not called a spindle, then whatever. But clean all that up properly. Anyway, I'm going to go to the shop now. Probably take me about an hour to get there and get back and get everything. So I'm going to do a bit of camera editing magic right now. Are you ready? Watch this. Old wheel stud. New wheel nuts. Boom. All right. There you go. That's a stark difference. All right. Anyway. So all these wheel studs do. Just tap back through. Bang. Brand new. All right. So that's done. Well, we'll be done. All right. So I'm not going to bother with, uh, you know, cleaning up all the old bearings because looks like it's been a long time since they've been done. Um, I'm just gonna put new ones straight in. But if your bearings are spinning freely, there's no pitting on the outsides of um, the rollers and that, then then you don't have to put new ones in. They're not cheap, that just cost me like 120 bucks. But um, you wanna shake them all out in that fuel, clean all the grease out of them, then you wanna repack them, put them back in. So I'll show you how to repack new ones. Right, that. Is how a bearing should spin <laughs> not like before 
So you've got your outer casing, that's what your bearing spins in. you got your rear outer casing, and that's what that bearing spins in. you got that nice little shiny thing I tapped out before, and your rubber ring. Alright, so I've got some Penrite Marine Grease. Penrite's my favourite, but you can use whatever. Also got some Marine Grease here. Disperses the water as opposed to other grease sort of not dispersing the water, I guess. But um, anyway, I get good scoop Penrite Marine Grease. All right, put the big dab in my hand like that. Now you've got a tapered edge on your bearing. You want to use the back, hold it like that, and you don't have to tap it or anything, you just push it down into the grease like this, just little bits at a time. Right on the edge of that grease. Push, push. Push, 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 push. Push until you see the grease starting to come out from between those two rollers there. See that? See how the grease is pushed all the way through all these rollers? All right, then you move it a little bit around. Next to it, push, push. Push, 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 push. You can really see it starting to push out of this front face there now. And you continue that all the way around. Push. There. That bearing is packed. All right. Same with the big bearing at the back. All right. That big one's packed. Now the reason I wear the gloves is because it gets super messy. All right. But with these gloves, the grease is really hard to wipe off your hands. But to wipe off the gloves, piece of cake comes up almost brand new. All right, next thing I want to do is the inner and outer housing that's still in this hub, the old one, I want to get that out, all right? There's no point in putting new bearings in them old ones. Even though they looked all right, still want to do it. So what you want to do there, get a bigger screwdriver. If you can see in there, hopefully you can, this lip here, that's the edge of this housing. So that's this edge of this housing, all right? You wanna tap that down with a screwdriver and tap it out. Sometimes this is really difficult. Just work all four sides of that housing and you can see now the gap, see, it's starting to come out. So you can see that gap, it's gonna be out shortly. There we go, that's that old one out. Now you just wanna repeat the process to the little one. Wanna get your outer, okay? The flat edge, you get a sharper edge and a flatter edge. Flatter edge goes in first, all right? Now this can be a little bit of a pain to tap in sometimes because it wants to twist on you. So you just gotta work your way around. So you've got it all the way in. Then, you're gonna get your screwdriver and start to tap it on the edges down. You've gotta tap it all the way down to where it beds on that inside of that hub. Again, so. This is a bit of a process. All right, now that new housing is in there. When tapping it down, don't tap too hard because you don't want to slip and you know gouge out that face there. So you should have the bevel running like that. So when your bearing goes in, it sits nicely in there like that, all righty. That rear bearing goes in first. All right, it sits in here. Just make sure nothing's in there. It sits in here nicely. Then that rear case goes on top, locks him in. This can be a real pain to get in as you hit it and it starts just twisting and everything. So I'll sit it on there flat like that. I'll get a block of wood. tap it in like that. 
make sure it's all good. Rear dust seal goes in the top of your bearing like that, but we're not going to do that yet. Got me Penrite Marine Grease. Alright, so I just reach in. You can put too much grease in a bearing. I also wipe it all on the insides of this. You just want grease everywhere. All right, on the, around the outside of that. Alrighty, flip him over. Now, other little bearing. Goes in here. There's no seal that locks that one in. Okay, so all we do, I might actually just pull that out. Good dob all the way around on the inside, like that. Put your bearing in, grease all around there. All right, rear dust cover. On she goes. More grease on your axle spindle, on the back of it a bit. This will all get cleaned off at the end. On your thread, dust covers on the back, goes on. Be careful not to push that bearing out. All right, you'll notice pushes some grease out. That's good. So I wipe it all over that again. Back into our fuel container. We've got our washer from the old bit. Washer goes on. We've got our nut. Now what you'll notice is with the split pin before, there's a hole here in the thread, okay? And there's checkouts all the way around that nut. That hole will line up with one of the checkouts on the nut. So, you'll see the hole there on the thread every time I spin it, okay? To bed your bearings in properly. And probably should use a shifter, but multis, usually, multis always usually go all right for me is give it a good tighten, all right, and a loosen. Tighten and a loosen. Now to get them all in there. There you go, air just popped out, see, like, that's what you want. Now, that feels pretty good to me. You wanna, you don't want any movement in the disc, but you want it to spin freely. It'll spin more freely once the tire goes back on. That feels too loose to me. I think just a tiny nip like that feels quite good. All right, I'm gonna clean that off, grease. And this is where you just go over with a paper towel, just clean any external bits of grease off so heaps of stuff doesn't stick to it. And then we're ready to put the wheel studs back through. New wheel stud. Make sure the teeth line up. Grab the persuader. New wheel studs in, that's it. New wheel nuts, boom. Do that's all five. All right, tie goes on. Wheel nuts. All right, before tightening the wheel nuts, just make sure your bearing is set right. You want it to spin freely like that but you don't want any lateral movement, so you don't want to be able to wiggle the tire top to bottom. And that is perfect. All right, I've got my split pin. Tell you what, having that little bit of petrol air is so good, cleans everything up. Split pin, split pin goes straight down through that hole. Alrighty. Get my multis, turn him. And that's it. It's one bearing done. I've got bearing buddies on mine. So, you wanna clean that out. Bearing buddy slides back in. Dust cover, clean it. Dust cover goes on. And that's it. That's how you do a wheel bearing. 
It does differ a little bit if you've got to take a caliper off. My two front ones I have to take a caliper off. I will show you quickly when I do them just to how to get the caliper off um, and put the brake pads back on because it's a bit annoying. So when you tighten your tire back up, you've got it all back together before you put it on the jack. You wanna just nip up, nip up your wheel nuts and you wanna nip them up opposites. That one and that one. That one and that one. Then you wanna let your jack down slowly if you can or quickly. And you wanna tighten them. Still opposites. Still doing opposite, opposite, opposite. Then you wanna go around. Tighten, 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 tighten. They don't need to be ridiculously tight. Or what happens is what happened to me before. And that's it. One done. All right, I'm gonna do the other three. A good thing when you have your tire off is inspect all the back of the tire because that's where most of your blowouts will happen. You don't see the cracks and everything going on. This is honestly probably the last trip I'll do on these tires. This this one here in particular doesn't look great. It should be right, but who knows? So we've got a spare. Should be right. All you young fellas aspiring to go up to North Queensland and you know I remember when I first started going up there doing these seven hour toes. I knew how to do this, I was taught how to do it when I was younger and it is one of the best things you can know as a fisherman traveling because 12 o'clock at night when you're on the side of the highway and you've got no help to get someone out is really difficult and somewhere, some places impossible and it's very expensive to get a tow anywhere so if you have all your spare parts you know how to do this you can get yourself out of the trouble nine times out of ten all right so anyway all you guys that just watched this and picked everything I did wrong Drop a comment, let me know. That's how I was taught to do them. And it's always worked for me, so. Anyway, I'm gonna do the next three. All right, now, here is where it gets a little bit annoying. Even more annoying than before. So, these ones have brake calipers on them, all right? This is your caliper here. These are your brake pads. This is your disc, okay? So these bolts back here, if you can see them, there's one there. There's one up here. They're the bolts you want to undo and your bracket, your um, caliper will slide off. And that's just what you need to do to change these bearings, all right? So if you've got four of them, <laughs> sucked in. If you don't, that's good because the back ones are way easier. Um, so these bearings didn't look as bad as that back one, but I'm still doing them. Those caliper bolts don't look very inviting. Anyway, let's give it a crack. Righto, so that's your number one bolt you want to get off. Sure. Second, second caliper bolt, and this will just wiggle off like that. There's your brake pads. If you're lucky, your brake pads will stay right where they are, which I don't think they're gonna. Yep, sit it up there like that, and then start this. Bit. All right, there's another one done now. This bit can get a little bit frustrating. This shouldn't be too bad. Uh, some mechanical brakes on this, so. There's your two brake pads. You want to make sure that they are apart. And if you don't, it will go over your caliper, your two brakes, line back up where your bolts were. Alrighty. Then line up your other bolt, but always put a bit of grease back on your bolts before you put them back in. Boat trailers and salt. They're just never ending. So, that one goes in here. All right, calipers on, the bushes are back in. Um, that's it, tire on, check it all like I said before, and that's it. All right, so there you go. That's how you do your wheel bearings. And trust me, it's way easier to do it at home under your carport than on the side of the highway at 12 o'clock at night. So, it's worth doing. The bearings are done. <laughs> it is a crap job, I won't lie. That took me about three and a half hours, three hours, three and a half hours. So um, it's not like an all day thing, half a day. I know mechanics charge you about hundred bucks an hour. So by doing that yourself, you're saving three or $400. You're learning exactly what you have to do and in case you're in a bloody crisis situation. And- uh, Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said?
If you enjoyed this episode and are keen to see more, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.